I know, I know, calm down. It's a lot to have on the slide, so make sure you pause it, write it down, and then when you're done writing it, come back and follow along with what we're talking about here. So in 2.3, we're going to be adding and subtracting mixed numbers. And again, you're in sixth grade, so things are going to be a little bit more challenging. And here are the steps that I've outlined. It's the same in your textbook. I've just kept the same language here for this particular one, so you can reference it later. So for number one, we want to find the least common denominator. Remember, that's also our least common multiple of the fractions, if necessary. Then step two, we want to rename the fractions. That's making your equivalent fractions, if necessary. And then we add or subtract the fractions. And then we have to add or subtract the whole numbers. And then fourth step is to simplify if possible. So if I'm looking at these, I have two mixed numbers. I'll need to find the least common denominator of the fractions because there are already three. Woohoo! Don't need to do step two. Don't need to rename them. They're already in thirds. I need to add, or oh, sorry, I do need to add the fractions. So a couple of different things you could do here. You could rewrite this with the whole numbers and then put your fractions. So then add the fractions and then you can add your whole numbers. So it doesn't really matter when it's all addition. So I'm just going to put 18 plus and then this is going to be two thirds. And then I'm just going to write that as 18 and two thirds. So we got pretty lucky on this one because we had the same denominator and we were adding. It's always a lot easier when you're adding. The last example that I'll show you, you have to do something special when you're subtracting. So let's take another look. And again, I'm, um, I rewrote the um, instructions on the next slide just so we could reference them. So don't have to write it down each time. Just write down the examples. So here we're going to be adding with different denominators. So we do have to go through that process of finding the least common denominator of the fractions. So here are my fractions. So I have 6 and 4. Hopefully you see right off the bat that it's 12. I'm just going to go ahead and write it. Oh, the first common multiple that I come across, which we again, when we're dealing with fractions, we call it a denominator or at least common denominator is going to be 12. So 5, 6 needs to turn into a fraction over 12 and 3 fourths needs to turn into a fraction over 12. And I ask myself, 6 times what gives me 12? 6 times 2, so then 5 times 2 gives me 10. And then 4 times 3, 3 times 3 gives me 9. So then add or subtract the fractions. And again, I like to kind of rewrite this if you're going to not change them to improper fractions. To go ahead and put your whole parts off to the side so you don't lose that, especially when you're adding. And then 5 6, I'm going to rewrite that as 10 twelfths plus 9 twelfths. So I know I've taken care of everything and I haven't left anything off. So the way that this is going to look is 4 plus 3 is 7, plus 10 plus 9 is 19 twelfths. Now, this is what we call an improper fraction. So I know there's one whole 12 in there. So I'm going to rewrite this 19 twelfths. I'm going to rewrite that as 1, because 12 goes into 19 one time, and I'm left with 7 twelfths left over. Okay, so instead of this, I'm going to just replace it with this. So this is going to be 7 plus 1 and 7 twelfths, which I'm just going to rewrite as 7 plus the 1, because I'm going to add my whole numbers. 7 plus 1 is 8 and 7 twelfths. 
Okay, and you could always estimate as well to help you out. This is close to one. If it was six over six, it would be one. So this would be closer to five. And then the three and three fourths, it's kind of almost close to four. So five plus four gives you nine if you're estimating. So you know your answer is around nine. Okay, and it's a little bit less because we rounded up. Now, again, calm down. These are the same instructions, so you don't have to rewrite these. This is just that bit that we have to do a little extra something to make it a little bit more difficult for us. So here we go. Find the least common denominator of the fractions. So if I'm looking at these, oh, I know my common denominator is 6. So I'm going to rewrite 1, 6. I don't have to do anything with that. Minus... And then this is going to be one third needs to turn into something over six. So this is three times two. One times two gives me two. So two six. Now we're in a little bit of a dilemma here because we're going to get into the negatives. So what this guy has to do, he has to borrow. And you're like, ah, oh, I don't want to have to borrow. So this. 6 and 1 6 I need to borrow a whole from him and then I take that whole and I break it into six parts and I know you're like ah. but basically what happens is 6 and 1 6 that's the same as writing 5 plus 1 plus 1 6 and then I'm gonna rewrite 5 plus but remember when we have to rename our ones? So I'm going to rename this as 6, 6 plus 1, 6. Now they're the same denominator. So this is going to be 5. And 6 plus 1 is 7, 6. Now that I have this and I can substitute in for this, I'm not going to worry about getting into that negative. So I'm just going to rewrite this as 5 and 7 6 minus and 3 and 1 3rd remember the 1 3rd we changed to 2 6 so I'm going to say 3 and 2 6 now we're back to where we're going to have a positive so 7 and again you can pull the whole numbers off to the side 5 minus 3 okay, and that's going to give you 2 And then the 7, 6 minus the 2, 6 is going to give you 5, 6. So it's going to be 2 and 5, 6. And technically, I probably shouldn't have written it like that. Um, it's not very mathematically correct. 